coming up on Cardinals Insider. I'm seeing a lot of pitches to hit, and you know, I get to watch Goldie and Carps at bats in front of me, and I feel like I'm trying to play up to that level and, and make a name for myself out there. Paul DeYoung is off to a good start. More on the shortstop strong 2019. Plus, yeah, ab absolutely. Who doesn't want to go to Japan for 10 days and play some baseball? Two Cardinals spent part of their offseason playing in Japan. Hear from Yadier Molina and John Brebby about the trip. And later, we had like two truckloads left to lay, and we got six inches of snow. The grass isn't always greener, but sometimes it is. We're talking new sod at Bush Stadium. Welcome to Cardinals Insider. I'm your host, Ozzie Smith. Paul DeYoung is in his second full season as a big leaguer and third season overall. He's playing well in 2019, and that makes him the subject of this week's player profile. Out to deep left. At the wall! Goodbye! The first hit. It's a homer. More experience in the league, understanding myself as a hitter better, and you know, preparing in different ways so that you know, doing drills in the cage that help my game swing out better. So I feel like just the intention and the effort level that I've had is just at a higher level now than it was when I first came in the league. Swing and a shot to center field. Back goes their center fielder on the move. Can't get it. Takes a hop and goes off the wall. And Paul goes in the second base with a double. Whenever I try to create or you know think about results, that's when I usually get myself in trouble. And so for me, it's about you know training my swing in the cage, and then when it goes out into the game, just looking for pitches in my zone to, to make good contact with. It's tough at times because when you think about this game and how long it is, and you know you want to have all these big numbers at the end of a year, and you try to you try to push for all these results and. For me, I'm just trying to treat it as a process and you know, go out there and, and rely on my natural ability and take what the pitcher gives me. Hanging breaking ball and extra bases for DeYoung. Last year, I think I lost my mechanics a little bit coming off the DL, just a little, you know, wasn't sure myself. You know, you could watch video, you could see big differences. So for me, it's just about getting back to clean, uh, efficient mechanics. And, you know, in my head, I feel like I've been nailing those down every day. I'm seeing a lot of pitches to hit, and you know, I get to watch Goldie and Carps at bats in front of me, and I feel like I'm trying to play up to that level and, and make a name for myself out there. DeYoung hits one out to right center. It's at the wall! Perfect timing, Paul DeYoung! What I've tried to do over the last two years, and with the help of Okendo and Colton, we talk about this a lot, is separating the game, playing defense when you're on defense, playing, you know, being a hitter when you're at the plate, and being a base runner when you're on the bases. And, you know, being able to do all those things is what makes you a complete player, and that's what I want to be. Yadier Molina and John Brebbia had a non-traditional offseason. The pair went with a team of other major leaguers to play games in Japan. Here's more on their trip and experience learning about baseball in another culture. This past offseason, Yadier Molina and John Brebbia got a different view of baseball. Shuta Tonosaki of the Cebu Lions will dig in here. They were part of the Japan All-Star Series, which sent a team of big leaguers to play exhibitions in four Japanese cities. It was just something that uh, the MLB called and asked if I wanted to do and said, yeah, absolutely. Who doesn't want to go to Japan for 10 days and play some baseball? I learned a bunch of stuff there, a uh, lot of new foods for us, new experience. That was great, great time. My favorite part was attempting to speak Japanese and try and order food or I, I try and make it a habit to explore different co coffee shops and places I go. And failing miserably at speaking Japanese was definitely my favorite part of the trip. The language and the cuisine were not the only unique parts of the trip. The Japanese ballpark experience is much different than the States. Fans are more consistently boisterous throughout the course of the game, and the seats, well, they go virtually unused. They're different, they're chatting the whole game. 
the singing, the dancing, I mean, it's, it's, it's a new experience. I mean, I, I like it, I love it, so we have, we have a great, great experience with that. Brebbia wasn't just getting to know Japan, he was also meeting new MLB counterparts. Molina knew some of their teammates, but Brebbia was meeting many for the first time. Yadi was there, which was awesome, so I kind of had him to hang out with when I first got there. He, he knew a few guys already. Um, I, I knew far fewer. New country, same game, and familiar results. And he brought his fastball with him, the high gas. Yadi Molina with a three-run homer in the fifth. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Brett McMillan. Straight ahead on Cardinals Insider. You can do the whole process in two to three days. It's a whole new playing surface at Bush Stadium. We show you how they changed out the grass for this season. Also coming up. We are so excited about this location in Bush Stadium. Hope you're hungry. We show you the all new burger bar in Budweiser Terrace. The playing surface is important in baseball. Good grass means true hops. The Cardinals ground crew makes it their mission to provide the best playing surface in pro sports. And this season, that includes brand new sod. If you have good weather, start to finish, you can do the whole process in two to three days. A full day of stripping the grass, which is basically, we bring in a big unit that just basically mulches the grass up. It goes out on a big conveyor and it goes into the back of our little dump carts and they take it out back and it just turns it into a big pile of compost, more or less. And then you, you grade off your sand, you get everything perfectly lasered out like, like you want it. And then we start bringing in the big rolls of side, which are four foot wide. So they're like big rolls of carpet almost. And you know, we got lucky. We got most of the field laid in one day and we had a little bit of an area we needed to do in the outfield. I think we had like two truckloads left to lay and we got six inches of snow. It made it pretty interesting. The next day we had to come in and remove snow from the sand. I've never had to do that before. So we were able to get the field basically done in, in three days. We went to a different sod farm than we've ever used before. We've never used grass from New Jersey before, so it's gonna be interesting to see how that grass works. It's, it's working great so far. It's, it's really nice, very green. We're excited about it. For me, the biggest, you know, I love baseball, obviously. You know, I played in high school, but you know, being outside every day uh, has its advantages, you know. It gets tough when you're stuck behind walls or a cubicle. I could, I don't know, I'm not built that way. I don't know if I can handle that. So I love being outside. I mean, July and August is rough when it's 110 degrees, but, uh, you know, and that and also being able to take something that's, you know, that they're, that at the end of the day, it's kind of beat up and chewed up and just to flip it back over and have it look pristine the next day and then present it to the world again in, in you know, perfect order. It's just, it's just kind of neat. I mean, obviously being on the big stage in Major League Baseball is really cool too. Straight ahead. I was enjoying my moment here. You know, I was very happy to come into the ballpark every day. We catch up with Cardinals alumni Fernando Tatis. Plus, it's more like a restaurant burger versus something you might get at a ballpark. We show you some of the new food items creating a buzz at Bush. Have you listened to the Cardinals Insider Podcast yet? Each week, the show welcomes players, executives, and alumni. Plus, hear audio from the Cardinals Radio Archives. Take Cardinal Baseball with you on the Cardinals Insider Podcast. Listen or subscribe wherever you get your podcast or at cardinals.com slash podcast. Summer in the Midwest means trip to Cardinal games. It makes memories which last a lifetime and also has a big impact on the St. Louis economy. So when you hear of, of an economic impact, and there's usually one big number, and that's the gross number, and for the Cardinals, that's $300 million. Things that are bought for dining and entertainment and tickets and those kinds of things. Those dollars flow through the economy to vendors and concessions and those people that support the activities in and around the stadium. I think there's a couple things that really impact why the Cardinal brand is so iconic and is so sustainable. And there's two things. One is they're very innovative on how they, they look at and attract 
and bring a, a fan experience to the stadium for each and every fan. Part of that is with Budweiser Terrace and the Champions Club. They're very innovative in how they use their space, but also how they want to have a fan experience. But the other part that's pretty interesting is how they're also developing and changing the skyline of St. Louis. And so you look at Ballpark Village and what they've done with that. First phase was $100 million. And the second phase is almost two and a half times greater than that at $260 million. And they'll have two towers. One is going to be an apartment and condo complex of 29 stories. And the other one is a mixed use office space and hotel. There's cranes in downtown St. Louis. They're changing the skyline and they're investing in the community. And that's what's so strong and keeps the Cardinals so iconic. When fans come to the game, there are plenty of great food options. One of the new areas to eat in in 2019 is the Budweiser Burger Bar up in Bud Terrace. It's a new season, which also means new food at the ballpark. This is the brand new Budweiser Burger Bar. We are so excited about this location in Bush Stadium. It really provides um, a great burger experience that's quality, just like you would get in a restaurant, but you can get right here in this ballpark. The Burger Bar offers three half-pound burgers, and one of them has quite the St. Louis flair. We have three basic burgers. The classic Bud Burger, the Bud Bacon Burger, and also the Taste of the Hill Burger. I got the classic burger. Uh, I had them take the lettuce and tomato off, but I like it. It's, it's more like a restaurant burger versus something you might get at a ballpark or a picnic. It features new menu boards to illustrate the burgers. Even the burger wrappers are unique, as they not only keep it warm, but wrap around to hold the burger together. The classic and the Bud Bacon barbecue burger features Budweiser pub cheese. They all have Budweiser buns, which has Budweiser in the bun. And the Taste of the Hill burger, which has actually become a real fan favorite, has marinara sauce, provolone cheese, and topped with two toasted raviolis that are just delicious. Other fruit items include Little Bud Sliders and Tater Tots, along with gluten-free and vegan-friendly options. We really didn't have a burger that was a restaurant-quality burger, so that was part of the inspiration for uh, this stand, but also just to fulfill a need that the fans have and you know, something that they really enjoy, and man, have they really enjoyed them so far this year. So come on up to Budweiser Terrace, grab a Bud, and get a delicious burger. Reporting for the St. Louis Cardinals, I'm Ben Holtmeyer. It's time for this week's trivia question. 20 years ago, Fernando Tatis hit two grand slams in a single inning. Which team did he do it against? Was it the Los Angeles Dodgers, the San Diego Padres, the Chicago Cubs, or the Cincinnati Reds? The answer when we return. We're back with the answer to this week's trivia question. We ask which team Fernando Tatis hit two grand slams against in a single inning. The answer is the Los Angeles Dodgers. It happened at Dodger Stadium on April 23, 1999. And a drive to left center. Is it another one? Yes! Two grand slams in one inning. That was a great moment for me, uh, for my career. Uh, Hit two grand slams in one inning. It was something that you don't see. It. Like, you know, first time it, it happened, and uh, I love it. And my second about there was try to hit the ball, you know, where the pitch is. So you just, you know, if it's happened, it's happened. You know, and there is, it's happened. Oh, man, that, I cannot believe that happened, you know, and that really happened. Yes, you, I'm really dead, and, you know, I'm, I'm very happy about it. I was enjoying my moment here, you know. I was very happy to come into the ballpark every day and uh, just play hard here and play here in St. Louis. It was something different, totally different. Smart guy, very smart. So you're learning a, about a lot, you know, right next to him. So you're learning about the game, you know, the situation, hitting situation special, how to go the other way, you know, when to go the other way, when, you know, you have to punt. So you're learning a lot with Tony. Happy to be here and just, you know, defend how they're gonna support you. You know, they're gonna support you no matter what. So just be nice to the fan, you know, just go out there and play 
the right gang and they're going to give you a big support. Fernando rips it to left field. Coming up next. Would you call that an inside strike or what would you call that? It's close, yeah. Is it a strike? Yeah. Good dude, come on, close. A nun with a knack for throwing right down the middle. Sister Mary Jo Sobiek is a huge Cardinals fan. She also electrified the internet last season with a nearly perfect first pitch at a Chicago White Sox game. Recently, she brought her arm to St. Louis to show her favorite team what she could do. All right, buddy, got to stay low, stay low. I became a Cardinals fan when I moved to Springfield, Illinois. I'm from central Minnesota, and I entered the convent, the Dominican Sisters of Springfield in Illinois in 1993. And I have a mutual friend in the convent who knows someone who is not a sister, and she loves the Cardinals. And so she and I became friends, coming down to the ballpark and just hanging out around here. I needed a National League team, so the Cardinals were it. I love Harrison Bader. He reminds me a lot of me when I was a kid because I was just like, they called me a spark plug. And he just lays himself out like all the time. And Yachty's just been around forever. I just look at him and he's just got such a strong character and, and, and personality. He carries himself with such leadership and um, it's, it, those two guys are just real leaders. How was that? So what, what would you call that an inside strike or what would you call that? Close, yeah. Is it strike? Yeah. Good dude, come on, close. We'll call it a strike. That's right. It's belt high, man. Yeah. It was belt high. There's a there's a cathedral-esque kind of feeling to all stadiums. So I I just love being here. It's 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 there's it's a holy moment. It really is. Nice. nice. Here's a theme night you probably haven't heard of. The Cardinals held a boy band night last month at Bush Stadium. So that got us to thinking, how many boy bands could the players name? That's this week, Ask a Cardinal. Backstreet Boys and Sync, 98 Degrees. Uh, the Canadian one where they do a music video that's like in the clouds or something. In Sync, Y2K. Got One Direction. <laughs> boy bands. I don't know what counts as a as a boy band. In Sync, Backstreet Boys, um, One Direction, uh, Hanson. Is Led Zeppelin was all men, so that's probably a boy band, right? Backstreet Boys, Maroon Five, One Direction. <laughs> boy bands. Did I say In Sync already? I think I did. Jonas Brothers, Beatles. Backstreet Boys, Migos, In Sync, Backstreet Boys, uh, Boys to Men, Backstreet Boys, In Sync, One Direction, 98 Degrees, New Kids on the Block. They are the fire, my two desires. When we return, it's a super fun event. It's brunch with Fred Bird. Stay with us. Brunch is a weekend favorite for many. What could make it even better? How about a visit from Fred Bird? So today's Fred Bird's Easter brunch. You know, it's a great way to celebrate the holiday. Come down to the ballpark. You get to see Fred Bird and Paulette, the Build-A-Bear Workshop bunny, and have some fun. So Fredbird's a pretty busy guy, and a lot of times during the season, it's really hard to get your hands on him. He's always running through the ballpark. It's hard to track Fred down. So this is a great opportunity for kids to really get to see him and hang out with him, take lots of pictures. 
It's a super fun event. We haven't had Easter here at the ballpark in a bunch of years, so this is kind of a unique opportunity to get to come down. Some kids' first chance to see Fred Bird, get their picture with him. You got to enjoy brunch, there's dessert, some cupcakes for Easter. There were coloring sheets, a lot of kids were coloring pictures, even some for Fred Bird and taking pictures with Paulette and Fred, and now they're gonna head out and enjoy a baseball game. So there's another opportunity to meet Fred Bird and some other special friends at Fred Bird's birthday party. That's coming up later this season. Same deal, there'll be brunch, goodie bags, some different activities, and you can find more information at cardinals.com theme. These are all part of our special theme tickets program. That's it for this week, but Cardinals Insider is always online. See full episodes and individual stories at cardinals.com slash insider and the club's YouTube page. We leave you with the sights and sounds of Cardinals Nation. Hey, legit, what you need to hit? That's a point.